वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ सक्सेस मंत्र आज हम करेंगे बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ इनकम टैक्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट डायरेक्टली विद टॉपिक कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ इनकम टैक्स लो देर आर टोटल फाइव कंपोनेंट्स टू प्रिपेयर इनकम टैक्स लो नंबर वन इनकम टैक्स एक्ट नाइनटीन इनकम टैक्स एक्ट इनकम टैक्स एक्ट एग्जिस्टेंस में आया था फर्स्ट अप्रैल नाइनटीन को देर आर टोटल टू सेक्शंस एंड फोर्टीन शेड्यूल्स वट इज मीनिंग ऑफ प्रोविजन एक्सप्लेनेशन Proviso gives exceptions to the provision and explanation gives clarification related to the provisions. Second, Annual Finance Act. Annual Finance Act gives rates of the taxes. Number three, Income Tax Rules. Income Tax Rules are generally issued by the CBDT for proper administration of the Act. Number four, Notification. Notifications are generally issued by the central government and it and it is issued by the central government. That's why it's binding on every assessee. That is either assessee plus income tax department. Next, circular. Circulars are generally issued by the CBDT. That is central board of direct tax. That's why it's a binding on the department only, but not on the assessee. But however, assessee can take advantage of the benefit circulars. Number five, case laws. Generally, case laws uh, is treated is regarded as judicial decision, and judicial decisions are generally passed by Supreme Court and High Court. So, Supreme Court is the topmost. court in our country so any decision passed by supreme court is the law of land and it's applicable to all or we can say it's a binding on all all the courts up in a tribunal income tax authority and on the assc but various decision of the high court cannot bind on the other high courts we can say uh, high court decision of the high courts are restricted restricted to the jurisdiction of the state only next assc section 2 subsection 7 assessee means every person by whom any tax or any other sum of money is payable under this act b any proceeding started under the act number c deemed assessee that is a person assessable for income of some other person like clubbing of income and number 4 assessee in default it means a person who does not deduct any tax or after deducting does not pay tax to government or fails to pay advance tax so assessee is uh, so, so definition of assessee is divided into four parts number 1 any tax payable by the any tax any tax payable by the person number 2 any proceeding started under the act number 3 deemed assessee and number 4 assessee in default definition of person is given under section 2 sub section 31 so definition is divided into seven categories number 1 individual second HUF that is Hindu undivided family number three company number four partnership firm including LLP number five association of person and body of individual number six local authority and number seven artificial judicial person. So what is substantial interest in the company? Any beneficial owner of a shares carrying at least twenty percent of voting power is regarded as substantial interested in the company. Average rate. how we can find average rate it's given under section 2 sub section 10 a simple formula is total tax payable divided by total income multiplied by 100 so my dear friends keep in mind that here we have to calculate total tax payable divided by total income multiplied by 100 so what is total tax total tax is after considering education says health and education says or surcharge or rebate and relief etc all what is maximum marginal rate it is the highest slab rate of tax including surcharge which is applicable to individual aop or boi so here we have to take only highest slab rate which is applicable to individual aop and boi next definition of income is given under section 2 sub section 24 uh, first of all hamare mind mein ek question rehta hai ki bhai illegal income pe tax hota hai ki nahi hota hai so here the clarification is illegal income is also taxable under the income tax act 1961 what is about the disputed income disputed income is also taxable to the recipient till the dispute is settled what is contingent income like tin patti ki income rehti hai a contingent income is not income so it is not taxable what is pin money pin money is generally treated as capital asset so it's not taxable and अ मेन कंसेप्ट इज इनकम मस्ट कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड लाइक आपको बाहर से इनकम आनी चाहिए बाहर से आप इनकम कमा कमाते चाहिए लाइक सैलरी इनकम हाउस प्रॉपर्टी कैपिटल गेन इनकम फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेज पी जी बी पी एट्सेट्रा मतलब आप घर में एक दूसरे को पैसा देते हो तो ये टैक्सेबल नहीं होगा इनकम मस्ट कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड नेक्स्ट 
relevance of method of accounting followed by the SAC. It's again important question. It's asked in MCQ. So, our total 5 head hai. number 1 salary, second house property, number 3 capital gain. Generally, ye tino head mein specified format diya hai, how to compute taxable income under various heads. So, in case of salary, house property, and capital gain, methods of accounting is irrelevant. But in case of PGBP and income from other sources, methods of accounting is relevant. What is difference between capital receipt and revenue receipt? Generally, capital receipts are not taxable under the Income Tax Act 1961, but it's a to the extent. To the extent, why am I Because capital gain chapter specifically has been given under section 45. So, where the income has been given under the head of capital gain, that will capital receipt taxable. Hogi. Uske alawa, jo bhi capital receipt hai, wo taxable. Nahi hogi. Next, revenue receipts are always taxable but unless expressly exempt like given under section 10. Next, liquidated damages. Liquidated damages are a capital receipt and it's not taxable. Compensation on termination of agency is generally treated as capital receipt. So, it's not taxable. But if the assessee has several agencies and one of them is terminated and compensation is received, the receipt would be revenue receipt. Keep in, mind, keep in mind my dear friends, compensation on termination of agency is generally treated as capital receipt, hence it's not taxable. But if the assessee has several agencies and one of them is terminated, so it is treated as a revenue receipt and revenue receipt is always taxable. Next, compensation received from the employer for premature termination is treated as capital receipt. Although it is a capital receipt, it's taxable under the head of either salary or IFOS as the case may be. Next, compensation received for termination or modification of terms and condition of any contract relating to its business is a business income. So my dear friends, here you specifically written that you have compensation mil raha hai for the termination or modification of any terms and conditions and it's related to business. So it's taxable under the head of PGBP. Now, main difference which is for 2 mark is application of income and diversification of income, diversion of income. What is application of income as name itself suggests, aapke paas pehle income aati hai aur uske baad ye income ko aapko apply karna hai either to a uh, set of your expenses or your trade liability or any other things. So application of income, if assessee applies or uses his income to discharge his obligations, after the income reaches the SIC. So my dear friends, this line is very important. That is, aap use kar, kab kar rahe income ko after the income reaches to the SIC. So it is an application of income and hence it is taxable because income pehle aapke paas aati hai aur uske baad aap usko discharge, isko aap use karte hai to discharge any tax, any liability, any obligations or any expenses. So ye income pehle aapke paas aati hai, that's why it's taxable. Next, diversification of income as name itself suggests, income is diversified at the point of source. So my dear friends, this income is diversified, ho jati hai, mal, mal, uska diversion is jata hai, kaha se? Mal, from source only. So this income aapke paas aate nahi hai and that's why it's not taxable. So diversion, diversion of income, if there is overriding charge on the source of such income which diverts the income before it reaches the SAC, it is the diversion of income. Such income cannot be treated as income and thus not taxable. So, so keep in mind only two things, application of income is taxable and diversion of income is not taxable. Next definition of financial year, previous year and assessment year. Financial year is generally started from 1st April to 31st March. Previous year is generally an income earning year. Assessment year is the financial year in which income is generally assessed to taxed. What is first year? First previous year for newly set up business or profession during the financial year. So in case of existing business, generally previous year is started from 1st April to 31st March. But in case of newly, set, newly started or newly set up business, generally previous year is started from the date of setting up of business and ending on the last day of that, that financial year that is 31st March. So we can say in case of existing business, it is always started from 1st April till 31st March. But in case of newly set up business, that is started from the date of setup of business till 31st March. So again, we can say previous year is either less than or equal to for 12 months. Cases where income of the previous year is assessed in previous year itself. 
तो यहाँ पे पांच एक्सेप्शन दिए गए हैं इट्स एन इट्स एन एक्सेप्शन ऑफ जनरल रूल जनरल रूल क्या है कि जनरली इनकम इज अर्न इन प्रीवियस ईयर बट टैक्स इज पेड इन असेसमेंट ईयर बट इन ऑल ऑल दिस फाइव केसेज वी हैव टू पे टैक्स इन प्रीवियस ईयर इट सेल्फ नंबर वन सिपिंग बिजनेस ऑफ नॉन रेसिडेंट सेक्शन वन सेवेंटी टू इन केस ऑफ सिपिंग बिजनेस ऑफ नॉन रेसिडेंट वी हैव टू मग अप दैट इज इनकम इक्वल टू सेवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ फ्रेड पेड और पेएबल वेदर इन इंडिया और आउटसाइड इंडिया सो इट्स अवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ग्रोस फ्रेड सेकेंड पर्सन लिविंग इंडिया नंबर थ्री एओपी बी ओ आई और आर्टिफिशियल जुडिशियल पर्सन फॉर्म फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर इवेंट और पर्पज नंबर फोर पर्सन लाइकली टू ट्रांसफर प्रॉपर्टी टू अवॉइड टैक्स एंड नंबर फाइव डिसकंटिन्यूड बिजनेस तो ये पांच एक्सेप्शन है इन ऑल सच केसेस वी हैव टू पे टैक्स इन प्रीवियस ईयर इट सेल्फ तो आपको यहाँ पे असेसमेंट असेसमेंट ईयर वाला जो हमारे पास बेनिफिट है वो एक साल का बेनिफिट नहीं मिलेगा अंडर अनडिस्कलोज सोर्स ऑफ प्रीवियस ईयर फॉर अनडिस्कलोज सोर्सेज ऑफ इनकम देर आर टोटल सिक्स केसेज इन विच देर इज अ क्वेश्चन मा कि भाई वॉट इज द प्रीवियस ईयर विच इज द प्रीवियस ईयर प्रीवियस ईयर क्या होना चाहिए नेक्स्ट प्रीवियस ईयर फॉर अनडिस्कलोज सोर्सेज ऑफ इनकम देर आर टोटल सिक्स पार्ट Which are covered by section sixty-eight to section sixty-nine D. So let's start. Number one, case credit. Case credit, where any sum is found credited in the books of accounts, and for which there is a no or unsatisfactory explanation, then it is treated as income in the year in which it was found. Second, unexplained investment, section sixty-nine. Again, investment wrote not recorded in the books of accounts, or there is a no or unsatisfactory explanation. Then the value of investment are taxed as income of assessee of such financial year. Then unexplained money, bullion, or jewelry. Again, the reason is same. If it is not recorded in the books of accounts, or there is no or unsatisfactory explanation, then it is treated as income in the year in which it is found. Number four, amount of investment not fully disclosed in the books. Number five. Unexplained expenditure and number six amount borrowed or repaid on hundi. Hundi means there is a loan which is either borrowed or repaid other than account pay check. Then it is treated as treated as income in the year of borrowed, in the year of borrowing, or in the year of repayment. So right under section sixty eight and sixty nine A B C D is covered by section one one five B B E and it is chargeable to tax at a basic rate of sixty percent. Surcharge is always levied at twenty five percent, and health and education says is levied at four percent. So average rate of tax on such undisclosed sources of income equals to seventy eight percent. And my dear friends, keep in mind there is neither the benefit of basic exemption limit nor set off of any laws shall be allowable against such income. Next, it's a very very important point: tax rate for different person. So let's start. For individual HUF, AOP, BOI, and artificial judicial person, either you are resident or non-resident, the tax rates are up to two lakh fifty thousand. Tax rate is nil, two point five to five lakhs. It's a five percent. Five lakhs to ten lakhs. It's twenty percent, and more than ten lakhs, thirty percent. For resident senior citizen, age age at sixty years or more, but it's a less than eighty years, then basic exemption limit is three lakhs. And for very senior citizen, or we can say super Resident super senior citizen, as at eighty years or more, basic exemption limit is five lakhs. That is up to five lakhs. Tax is tax rate is nil. Surcharge, uh, if income, if total income of individual AOP, BOI, or artificial judicial person exceeds to fifty lakhs, but up to one crore, then surcharge is levied at ten percent. But if income exceeds to one crore, then surcharge is levied at fifteen percent of total income. Uh, sorry, fifteen percent of income tax. Uh, when there is a concept of surcharge, or we can say surcharge is levied, also benefit of marginal relief is given. So, how to calculate marginal relief? Number one, the, there is a steps to calculate marginal relief. Number one, calculate tax on total income, including surcharge. Number two, calculate tax either on rupees fifty lakhs or rupees one crore, as the case may be. Number three, calculate extra tax payable. That is step number one minus step number two. Number four, marginal relief. It is calculated as extra tax payable, which is calculated in step three minus extra income. Extra income means over and above rupees fifty lakhs or rupees one crore, as the case may be. Rebate under section eighty seven a. Rebate ka meaning rahega discount. So there is a there is a provision of discount from tax. 
So benefit of rebate under section 87A is available only to resident individual whose total income is less than or equals to 3,50,000. रिबेट तो कितना रिबेट मिलेगा और कितना डिस्काउंट मिलेगा इट्स अ लोअर ऑफ टोटल टैक्स और रुपीस टू फाइव डबल जीरो नोट रिबेट अंडर सेक्शन एटी सेवन ए शेल बी बिफोर एडिंग फोर परसेंट ऑफ हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन सेस एंड रिबेट अंडर सेक्शन एटी सेवन ए इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ टैक्स पेबल एट टेन so always rebate and relief is always calculated before adding health and education says or surcharge and rebate under section 87a is cannot be claimed against ltcg under section 112a tax rate for partnership firm llp and local authority whole whole income is taxable at a flat rate of 30% without any basic basic exemption limit for cooperative society if total income is up to 10000 Tax rate is ten percent. If total income is between ten thousand to twenty thousand, then twenty percent. And if total income exceeds to twenty thousand, then thirty percent. So my dear slave, it's a slave rate. So you have to one by one calculate. Karna hai. For company, in case of domestic company, if turnover in the previous year two thousand sixteen seventeen is up to two fifty crore, then tax rate is twenty five percent. And in other cases, tax rate is thirty percent. But in case of foreign company, tax rate is um, there is a flat rate of forty percent. Surcharge in case of various assessee other than individuals, uh, in case of firms, LLP, cooperative society, and local authority, if total income exceeds to one crore, then surcharge is levied, always levied at twelve percentage. In case of domestic company, if income is more than one crore but up to ten crore, then seven percent, and if total income exceeds to ten crore, then twelve percent. But in case of foreign company, if income exceeds to one crore and up to ten crore, then surcharge is levied at two percent. But if total income exceeds to ten crore, then surcharge is levied at five percent. And health and education says is always levied at four percent on total income plus surcharge minus rebate under section eighty seven A. So we can say health and education says is always calculated at the last point of tax.